All right, Broken Hill, Matt. Um, something that you are phenomenal in your representation of regional Australia, not just the specific part of regional Australia that you, that you live in, is... And it's really opened my... Not opened my eyes, but certainly underlined my central belief over the past five years and why we do our town is to hate, hate 27 million people and they live in lots of different places and all of them have a right to health care and to be happy and to have a job and housing and all the rest of it. Um, what is the Broken Hill 10 Days Without Power and the collective national attitude to it say to you about what I was mentioning when it came to those two Australias? Well, lots of those, lots of those smaller parts of this country uh, feel feel uh, justifiably ignored. Uh, uh, obviously, if something like this had happened in a major city, it would be uh, front page news all around the country while it was happening. Yet, this has only just become news after the event, and I must I'm guilty myself. I didn't realise it until it was reported in the Australian. I have spoken to some of my New South Wales Nationals colleagues today after discovering it, and it's a shocking circumstance that. Broken Hill found themselves in. Uh, obviously, this was a freak storm that caused this, but there didn't seem to be a lot of care or concern for, for what is a historic uh, community that does produce, continues to produce a lot of wealth for our country. Uh, my New South Wales Nationals colleagues are calling on the government to declare this a natural disaster, and that would unlock uh, the normal assistance that occurs for people that have lost uh, you know, food items in their fridge, uh, had damage, and have to now uh, have thousands of dollars in cost in some cases to respond. So I hope the government does listen to those concerns. Now that more Australians know about it, I should also add too that uh, another thing that's not yet reported to me that I have heard through the traps is that Roxby Downs is also out of power. And now I'm not sure if it's the same storm, but it's a simile mm. from storms. It's been out of power for over a week now. And while some power has been restored, the Olympic Dam mine and smelter is still not at production, full production capacity. It's costing BHP a fortune. Uh, costing our country a lot of money and, again, just goes totally unreported uh, mm. uh, for the people that have to suffer through it in the country areas. Correct. But, you know, if there's a traffic delay on the way to the stadium because Taylor Swift's in town, rolling coverage uh, when it comes to the, the <laughs> cities. All right. Um, let's get a bumper sticker versions out of both of you about Queensland because, obviously, I want to give you one shot at America uh, before uh, I head off. Labor's second lowest primary vote in 100 years. Uh, yes, Greens pushed uh, a little further back. Look, I, I guess it's all about expectations and when you start off. Like, we went into that election thinking it was going to be like the Tarago election when Anna Bly got absolutely decimated. To be because uh, it's a bus, it's better? Well, well, yes, genuinely. Like, in four years' time, and, you know, I, I, I genuinely think Stephen should do the right thing by the party and go to the back bench and give us a chance to rebuild and put up some other faces yep. who aren't associated with the last how many years of the government. The success of the New South Wales Labor Party was the people who got booted or got flushed, the people who got elected were all brand new faces. Well, and you look at South Australia, Peter Malinowskis came back after one term because Jay did the right thing and yep. left. You look at uh, uh, Brumby and Dan Andrews was able to come back after uh, one term because... Mm. Uh, Brumby did a really good job, and similarly, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to um, uh, give uh, uh, Stephen Miles too hard a time. I'm sure you'll help me with well, that. More than happy. <laughs> but, but I do think, from a Labor perspective, he did not embarrass himself. He should be lauded as having, you know, had a dignified exit. But now, you know, do the right thing and go to the backbench. Well, as I said, whatever goodwill that may well have been built up for a couple of weeks, he blew on election night. Matt, your thoughts on um, little details here, little details there. What did you think? Well, look, um, I mean, the reason Sam went to bed um, happy on Saturday night was because the election day vote was a lot closer than the, the vote leading up to it. And the problem for the Labor Party was only a third of Queenslanders voted on election day. And so when those pre-poll numbers came in, the two-thirds who voted early, uh, they voted very differently and voted massively against Labor. So it could have been very well the bus if that trend had continued right through election day. And, look, it's a great win for the LNP. It's been a long time uh, since they've formed government. They deserve the plaudits for achieving that. Uh, at some time, though, of course, we'll have to look at that campaign and understand why there was such a big difference in the vote on Election Day compared to uh, pre-poll. Uh, my early estimation is, being on the booze, is that it's a lesson that uh, you can't fatten the pig on market day and especially trying to dock off a first-term government federally. We need to have some some pretty coherent and strong policies to withstand the inevitable Labor scare campaign. I mean, the only thing that the Labor Party excelled at over the last decade in Queensland was running the mother of all scare campaigns about Campbell Newman. Yes. And we got there in the end, but we we probably risked the, we, we tripped the light fantastic a bit by 
ourselves not having a lot of policies to defend mm. against that scare campaign. Good stuff. Lads, I will talk to you next week. Even though I'll be in America, you'll be here. The, the way of these America shows are going to work is, yes, I'm going to talk a lot, but it, we're still going to talk about Australia, and these lads will both look probably the same. How's that any different? Slightly happier than Sam right now. I wonder why. 